What Sean's I tell it? Let me text him up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah come on. Brought to you by Sean Porter Hey, yo, Sean Porter, hold tight. We coming out there. You be looking out, too. Yeah, yeah. He be holding it down. Hey, Sean, Sean looks like when, uh, and you're a college football fan, you know, when the kids commit and they put the hat on for National Signing Day? Oh, yeah, that's what SP yeah, looks yeah. like. He's got he's got the button yeah, up and the tie, and he's like, yeah. "I've decided to join NBC, NBC Sports." Sports. Telling yeah. you, it was, it was the days I dreamt about that I never had. Hey, Fox, you know Fox gonna have some problems soon. You know, I I ain't see what Rock of Fox had in a minute. They called me the other day. We good. Oh, okay. He needs, ask- a, he needs a split hat. He needs half Fox, yeah. half NBC. I ain't mad at that. Like the Curry parents, I'll do it. Well, that's a different level. We got two kids doing it big. Yeah. That's the dream right there. Yeah. Forget being a lawyer and a doctor. I want two kids in the NBA. <laughs> I have two Prouder. sons. Yeah. And then you no, hey, you got a chance. You I got mean, a the, chance. I see you. I mean, the holidays, they're, they're not on, on Steph and Seth's level, but the holidays have three kids. Uh, Justin, Drew, and – damn, I can't think of the third one's name. Justin Drew. Oh, there's another one. But yeah, I mean, if you get multiple kids in any professional sport, yeah. even if it's different ones, you did something right. Yeah, watch. Genetic wise, genetics wise and parents yeah. wise. Watch brothers, Howie Long kids. You're doing yeah. it right. Sean Porter, Kenny Porter. Uh, nah, nah. I was just trying to, I was just trying to bring Sean. I was trying to bring Sean back in. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sean, Sean got a shot. Sean got a shot with the two little ones. Mom was an athlete. Yeah. Sean, all right. He's all right. He all right as an athlete. So, all right. yeah, Sean, yeah, you got all right. You all right. All right. Hey, hey, mom's better than most men in, in little football passing. Yeah, but yeah. Hey, I'm just she can, real. Hey, she, can, she can sling she it. All right. My, the night of my birthday, <laughs> you, you, y'all know, y'all some of us start throwing the ball, and my dad just, he just sat there. He was like, hold on. I never knew this about her. <laughs> Yeah, she's right. level of respect for her after seeing her throw a football. Yeah, no, she can she can seriously sling it. Yeah, yeah so hey, got everything it takes to make it. But all she do is threaten me. I throw what? stuff at her all the time. You know, I, I I was a softball pitcher, right? I'm like, <laughs> what's she gonna do? She gonna wind up in the in the kitchen and hit all you she do is threaten me. Hey, they used to have, they used to have so Jenny Finch is one of the best softball pitchers of all time. I met Jenny. And on a show I back, in, throw that out there. No, you're good. Um, back in the day, they had a baseball show every Saturday, and they would have like a current star in Major League Baseball try to hit her fastball. Oh wow! And it it never went well. I can think of like a few guys that were able to get like solid contact, but the the mechanics are so different because it rises rather than drops. Uh-huh. And so, I mean, you see these guys that are hitting bombs every week, and then they see that, and it was like, ooh, and they're trying MLB to MLB players. Up. Yeah, couldn't hit it. No, nah, it was all bad. Yeah. I met her at the 08 games. Legend. And, uh, and she, yeah, just a legend. She was mad cool, too. Mad cool. Listen, let's get into it. We have a guest, one guest today, and then we'll get into the rest of the show. But uh, did you guys catch NBC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought that. I thought top to bottom, look, the car was, was relatively nice. I thought everybody showed up and did their job the way it was supposed to do, uh, specifically in the main event, the main event. Uh, Alberto Machado against Angel Fierro, and um, we'll, we'll we'll get into it with him. But he got oh. dropped twice early yeah. in the fight, and I thought it was a wrap. The second time, like, like looked like it might be. Yeah, I was yeah. like, his man is done. Yeah. So first, what we're gonna do is so Lupe Contreras is the uh, interpreter for NBC Sports for for the boxing, and he does a terrific job. I've heard every, every after every fight, everyone's always commending him for his ability to translate. And even my wife, she texts was like, he translates every single word. People go on forever with their response and he still does not miss a word. Tell him that he did a terrific job. So after the fights, we're, we're all back at the hotel. I said, hey, my wife told me to tell you, I know you hear this all the time, but you did a terrific job tonight. She said she was a little shook seeing how well you did it. She says, he says, I've been doing this since I was in kindergarten. So it's no thing for me. I said, dang, man, you've been doing it since kindergarten and, and it shows up now. So we're going to have him on. And I asked him to uh, introduce Angel, give him something nice to come onto the show with. And uh, maybe we'll, we'll be able to get Lupe to do this in the future. But let's get Lupe in here and then uh, and then we'll get the fighter in here. Lupe. Senor Sean, how are you, sir? I'm good, sir. How are you? Oh, not too bad. My guys, Carson A. Merck and Anthony Bernard. I don't Joe know where Bernard. they are on your screens, but 
Um, these are my two guys, and, and we're ready to rock and roll as soon as you are. I'm ready whenever you guys are. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the main event from Ring City, USA. He snatched victory from the jaws of defeat, becoming the new WBO and ABO lightweight champion straight out of TJ. Puro Tijuana, Ankel. Tashiro Fierro. ¿Qué tal? Gracias por la presentación. Thank you very much. Thank you for the intro. Awesome. Welcome to the show, my man. How are you feeling? Bienvenido. ¿Cómo te sientes? Hola, muy bien. Contento. Contento de estar aquí con ustedes y, y pues muy, 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 muy feliz por, por el triunfo. I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here with you guys and very, very happy for the victory. Eight days notice. It, it was talked about all night before the fight. Uh, I, I understand your position being always, the position is stay ready so that you don't have to get ready. Uh, I think you really shook up the world in that fifth round knockout. Is that, did you know that that, 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 that was going to, going to be the way the fight ha was going to play out? Tenías ocho días de aviso. Yo conozco tu posición. Tienes que estar listo, siempre listo para que no haya problema alistándote cuando recibas el mensaje. ¿Tú sabías que ese iba a ser el resultado cuando entraste al cuadrilátero? Sí, así es. Eh, tuvimos la pelea hace un, un par de, de días a, antes del, del, del acordado y sabíamos, sabíamos que el resultado iba a ser un, una, una gran pelea, que iba a ser un triunfo. Nosotros estábamos siempre seguros que íbamos a, a noquear. Yeah, that's, that's the way it is. I, I had a, a bit of a short notice, but I knew going into the fight, I knew that we had the victory. I knew we were going to get the victory and getting in there, I knew that would be the result. And, and you get, so you get dropped two times early. Was that something, was there any panic that set in at all when you, you know, you're down early, you know, those two big rounds, then, you know, you have to come back and get the win. Te tumbaron dos veces muy temprano en la pelea. ¿Te entró algún tipo de pánico en esos momentos? ¿O qué sentías cuando, cuando caíste la lona? No, de, de ninguna manera. Eh, al contrario, me motivé más y, y sabía. Dije, hay que aguantar, hay que aguantar eh, tres rounds. Sabíamos, sabíamos que después de esos tres rounds iba a bajar su nivel de, de intensidad y íbamos a, a meterlos a nuestra a nuestro estrategia que hemos preparado. No way, no, no way, not at all. As a matter of fact, it motivated me. I knew that I had to go three rounds. And once we got past those three rounds, his output tended to drop. And so I knew once the, his output dropped, I just implemented my strategy and we'd get the result. Uh, question for you, Angel. But prior to the fight, eight days, how much did you study Alberto Machado? Like going into to the ring, did you think you knew him? Everything there was to know about him? Solamente tuviste ocho días de aviso para esta pelea. ¿Qué conocías de, de Alberto Machado? ¿Lo habías estudiado o qué tanto habías visto de sus peleas? Eh, a Machado lo habíamos conocido tiempo atrás, ya lo habíamos visto. Eh, el día que nos avisaron que enfrentábamos a Machado, eh, en ese momento empezamos a estudiarlo. Sabíamos que estábamos a pocos días, pero el trabajo de mi equipo, el trabajo de mi entrenador eh, Fernández, eh, Fer, Fernando Fernández fue, fue muy bueno y la estrategia que, que la manejamos la, la trabajamos muy bien y, y pues dio, dio resultado este este jueves. We actually knew him quite well. Since we got noticed that, that we were going to be fighting him, we we went right to it, setting up a strategy. Uh, my trainer and I put together a, a good plan. And so we knew quite a bit about him. And once we had the plan together, we we sat out to uh, to implement it. You're you're in one of the hottest divisions in boxing. Any of the names? Anybody big that you want? Somebody big you want down the road? Estás, estás en una de las mejores divisiones del boxeo. Grandes nombres en esta división. ¿A quién te gustaría enfrentar? Eh, sí, sé que entramos a, a muchos ojos. Eh, fíjate que en, en el enfrentamiento no tengo a, a nadie en, en mente. Simplemente lo que puedo decirte es que, que quiero al campeón. Quiero ser campeón del mundo y quiero al quien tiene el cinto. I know that there's going to be a lot of eyes on there. A lot of people got a good look at us. I really can't give you any names. All I want you to know is that I want to be champion in this division. That's what I want. I want the big fights and I want to be champion. You're 18, one and one now. Do you think last night showed everyone every what you are, who you are, and Hill Fierro? Tienes un récord de 18 victorias, una derrota, un empate. ¿Tú crees que la presentación del jueves le dejó saber al mundo quién es Ángel Fierro? Eh, sí, claro, el, el día jueves eh, yo 
Ángel Tachiro Fierro se dio a conocer. Eh, el nombre, en mi nombre quedó marcado en Puerto Rico, en el mundo del boxeo. Y después de aquí quiero, quiero que la gente me siga conociendo y, y por eso quiero enfrentar a los mejores para que sepan de mí. Definitely, definitely. I think Thursday night, not only did I make my mark in Puerto Rico, but I made my mark in the entire boxing world. They knew what uh, Ángel Tachiro Fierro is all about. And I think the world knows now. And, and you, to be considered a protege of Eric Morales is... That's a high, high praise for any Mexican fighter. Do you think in the general scope of boxing, is he underrated in history that he doesn't maybe get talked about as much as he should as an all-time great? Que la gente te reconozca como un pupilo de, de Eric Morales, obviamente es, es, es algo muy grande. ¿Tú crees que el mundo del boxeo aprecia lo que fue Eric Morales en toda su carrera? Sí, claro. Eric Morales fue un, un peleadorazo. Fue un, 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 un peleador, un guerrero, más que nada. Él dejaba el corazón arriba del ring y, y creo que dejó su nombre muy, muy bien marcado y de esa manera queremos dejar el nombre nosotros. Por algo estamos en su equipo. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. How can there be any doubt the way people see uh, Eddie Morales in, in, in the boxing world? When he would go up on the ring, he would leave his heart inside of the ring and I think he left his mark well, well uh, implemented in the history of boxing. And that's exactly what we want to do. And, and I love being part of his team and it, and it lets people know that I'm well-deserved to be part of the team. I got two more questions. Aunt. Go ahead. Go ahead. Aunt. Go ahead. I, I think you getting up from two big knockdowns shows the real Mexican warrior inside of you. Uh, did you feel that as you, as the two, the second knockdown, you feel you have to dig deep and find something inside el hecho que te levantaste de la lona después de dos caídas brutales demostró lo que, que tú eres un guerrero mexicano. Cuando te tumbó por segunda vez, ¿sentiste más motivación? ¿Sentiste que ahora sí tengo que comprobar el mexicano que vive dentro de mí? Sí, claro. Después de esas dos caídas, eh, o sea, como todo mexicano, saqué el corazón, sa saqué esa motivación que tenía dentro de mí, que la motivación que yo llevaba y... Sabía que tenía que dejar todo. Sabía que si llegamos a esa decisión no íbamos a, a lograr el triunfo. Y como todo mexicano, hay que morir en la raya. Oh, absolutely. I have to let everybody know the Mexican heart that was inside of me. I had a feeling. I knew if we let this go the distance, I, I'm not going to get the decision here. I'm, I'm not going to get the decision. And as we say in Mexico, I had to just, you know, basically die on the line there. I have to die on the line and put everything out, out in, the, in the ring. Yeah. And listen, I got two more for you. Tell us about your Minnie Mouse doll that you have. <laughs> Cuéntanos un poco sobre la, el, el muñeco de, de Minnie Mouse que traes contigo en, en cada pelea. <laughs> eh, fíjate, es, es el muñeco de, 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 mi, de mi suerte, es la, lo que me motiva, es por motivo de mi hija, es la motivación. Sé que, sé que de, teniendo este cinturón que tengo al lado de mí, puedo darle una mejor vida y eh, eso me motiva al estar en llegar a la esquina y, y des, que me diga, acuérdate que tienes una niña esperándote en casa. Eso es una gran motivación. Es por eso que siempre tengo el muñeco conmigo para acordar que, que tengo una bendición en mi casa. It's my motivation. It's my lucky doll. It's a doll that belongs to my daughter. So he's also part of the corner. He's part of my corner there in the ring. And when he's there, it reminds me of what I'm fighting for. It lets people know and it lets me know that by having this championship belt, I can change my daughter's life. It lets me know what I'm fighting for. And it gives me great motivation. And that's why I bring it with me to every fight. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah, hey, yeah. last question I got for you. Um, do you watch the Marvel movies? ¿Ves las películas de, de Marvel? Las, las de los superhéroes. Yeah. Sí, sí, claro. Yes, of course. <laughs> I, I watched film of you um, before the fight happened. Go ahead and, and translate that, Lupe. Vi video de tus peleas antes de, de que pelearas este jueves. I have to come up with a DNA who you are as a fighter in the ring. Tengo que analizar tu ADN. Uh, ¿Cómo eres tú como un boxeador antes de las peleas? Tengo que analizar todo. Okay. I, I said, this kid is muy loco. He does not matter. He doesn't care if he gets hit or if he's hitting somebody else. He just wants action. Dice, este chavo está muy loco. Él no le importa si le pegan o que si él está pegando al otro. Él no más quiere acción. <laughs> See, one, yeah. <laughs> one thing that they don't show in the Marvel movies when the Hulk gets when he gets hurt and he's and he's getting beat he grows and he gets bigger and bigger and bigger they don't show that in the movies but that's who he was as a comic he got bigger every time he was getting beat up and getting and getting put down 
En las películas de, del Hulk nunca oh. demostraban que cuando lo golpeaban, cuando lo pegaban, él crecía, él crecía con más castigos, se hacía más fuerte. And you reminded me of the Hulk the other night when I was watching you and knowing that I was going to get on the line with you today, I wanted to know who's your favorite superhero and do you do you think you are a Hulk in the ring? Para mí, tú eres como el Hulk. Cuando, cuando te estaba viendo pelear, dice, este chavo es igual, igualito al Hulk. Entre más lo castigan, más crece. Y quería preguntarte, cuando estaba viendo la pelea, ¿quién es tu superhéroe favorito? Su superhéroe, Iron Man. Sí, pero ¿quién? Y para ti, ¿quién es tu superhéroe favorito? Para, para mí es Iron Man. Iron Man y, y Hulk. Uh, Iron Man and Hulk, those are my two sí. favorite ones. Yeah. Hey man, good luck in the future. Keep being the Hulk, and I will see you soon. Felicidades en el futuro. Creo que nos vamos a ver muy pronto y muchísima suerte. Muchísimas gracias, muchísimas gracias y, y gracias por la entrevista. Eh, gracias por creer en mí y, y les las aseguro que que van a seguir sabiendo de Ángel Tachiro Fierro. Thank you, thank you very much. I want to thank you all for the interview. Thank you for believing in me. And I guarantee you, you're going to hear a lot more of my name, Ángel Tachiro Fierro. I believe it. God bless. Lo creo. Dios te bendiga. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Lupe, you are the man. Thank you, yeah, sir. I'll smooth. It's, I'm, not a, I'm not a world-class athlete. The only talent I got, my friend. <laughs> It's either this or nothing. I, I told my wife last, last night, when once I had nailed down the interview and you and everything, I said, I said, guess what? I got Angel Fierro coming on the show. She said, okay, good. I said, you know what that means, right? She says, what? I says, that means I got the one and only Lupe coming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize your wife is Mexican? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. That's cool. Does not, does not teach me. Hey, Lupe, I was thinking that the whole time. Like, he, what, does he know that she's Mexican? No, I didn't, I didn't know. I, 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 you mentioned to me, you know, in the hallways as we were going to the, to the room, you, you said... My mom, uh, my wife, uh, you know, said that you your translation was verbatim. Yeah. I said, oh, cool. His wife speaks Spanish. I was like, it's yeah. pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it, it never occurred to me that she was Mexican. Uh -huh. you know? I was yeah. like, oh, that, that's pretty cool, man. That's I awesome. can't have her come in here and do that for me. She won't do it as good as you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I won't thank tell you. her you said that, but thank you very much, man. <laughs> hey, hey, Lupe, Lupe. She, said, she actually said, I'll watch this show because Lupe's on it. So she'll oh, probably awesome. see this. Okay, cool. <laughs> hey, Lupe, before you leave, we've been trying to get Sean to eat more Mexican dishes. Is it something you can recommend to Sean Porter? Well, that he there's there's a lot of Mexican dishes, <laughs> but but if you, if you notice that that us Mexicans aren't exactly fit and trim, you know, we all got those mariachi jeans, yeah. you know, where it's like we just get get big and heavy. If you want to move up to middleweight or or <laughs> start eating that Mexican food. Stay away from the yeah. tortillas, Sean. Yeah. It'll be a tough I, it'll be a tough weight cut. I've I tried to convince him on elote, but he wasn't having oh, it. Oh, hey, elote's great. You yeah. never had elote with like mayonnaise and the man. Man. Huh? Oh yeah. I'll pass. <laughs> out. There's one thing that I can recommend to you that you probably never thought of. It. It's a it's a root. It's called jicama. jicama. It's served cold. It looks like it looks like apple cut up with some of that Mexican sauce on it and lemon on it. Trust me, when you see it, it it's like nothing, but it's great diet food, it's pure fiber. And uh, it tastes delicious, man. For you, I, for you, and for my wife, and for Ann, I, I'll check it out. <laughs> ask her, ask her about jicama. She'll tell you exactly jicama. what it is. Okay. It's, like a, it's like a street food. I'll write it down right now. All right. Have I'm a good for... Lupe. All right, man. Thank you, guys. Uh, Later. Bye, bye. I need a pen to write down jicama. I, I'll, I'll, I'll text it to you. That way, we both got it. All right. I didn't, all right. I didn't know. I didn't know where the hell Sean was going with the with the Hulk thing when he started about the Marvel movies. I was like, okay. Like, uh oh. <laughs> oh. No, it was good. I, I, I thought it was a good question. No, it, it, it ended up being a very good question. Yeah. yeah. But when you started, like, yeah, do you watch Marvel movies? I was like, <laughs> uh, okay, extremely random after the the Minnie Mouse question, but yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, two characters there, yeah, so you know, not, not, yeah. not quite as random as, as you may. Oh man! And, and you know what? You know what's impressive about about what Lupe does in in any translator in general? I bet you right now, if any of the three of us, obviously English is our first language, if somebody gave an answer as long as some of those answers, and they said, "Hey, repeat what he just said." Even if it's, in, if we got, <laughs> it's in the same language and we're going to be yeah, like, yeah, yeah he kind of said that this was this. Yeah, yeah that's what you're going to ballpark yeah. it. You're going to try to summarize it. But because I, I sit with a lot of a lot of translators nowadays and the when, when the translator comes to doing it in English, you hear I hear him go. Um, um, and I'm like, I wonder if he really said that or you you just trying to remember what was said. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so it was impressive, though. Yeah, that, speaking, that, yeah, that fight.
That fight. Yeah. Yeah, that was serious business. That fight. I I uh I saw so we do twitch.tv after the fights. That's the, the post game show. And um somebody said I would um I Sean Porter uh the Porterway podcast is a good show, and I would not have known about this fight had it not had it not been for the podcast. And so I'm 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 really just grateful that I have this platform to, to do things like this. But what what I was trying to what I'm trying to stress to everyone is don't miss good boxing because you don't know a name or because you see a record and 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 that record isn't eye catching to you. Um, NBC's they're they're just go, they're basically going by the book. They're 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 matching up guys according to obviously their record their experience, but. Styles and it's like we always say styles make fights and that's what uh, NBC and Ring City USA are, are doing and it's really showing up and so when when I did it last week I said hey don't miss this fight I had watched Angel and I and I had watched Alberto but I was just more impressed when Angel he's he's gritty you know that Tijuana spirit of 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 never quitting and never never um giving up and things like that and. And I just saw something. I said, you know what? This is going to be a great fight. I'm going to just do the best I can to promote it. But if you miss the fight, you, you, it's your loss. And if you if you chose not to watch the fight because of a record or because there was no belts on the line and things like that, get that out of your head because boxing is more than belts. Boxing is more than records. Um, when we get down to the to the to the to the thick of it, everybody considers boxers to be some of the best athletes in the world, and it's because. We, we possess these qualities that no one else in sports has to possess. I mean, we literally get in there with our lives on the line and we can say the same thing about football players. They go across the middle, catch the ball and they out, but they may go down and they can put somebody else in until that kid's good and ready to go back in the game. And with boxing, there just is no substitute. It's, it's one and done. And, and you're giving it all you got. And that's when I held brought to the ring on Thursday night and he showed up and showed out, man. So I, I was proud, ex- excited. And I, and I wanted to know what was up with the mini dial. So I had him come on today. I don't, I don't think, think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't, I don't think anyone was undefeated on Thursday from, from the main card. And that wasn't a bad thing, which people have talked about that Floyd kind of did that in boxing where the undefeated record is so important. But a lot of times, when guys are have one loss or two losses, they end up being hungrier than when they have that that law or zero losses. So, um, I think you know a couple of the guys had like one loss, two losses. It was a, uh, it was overall it was good action. You're gonna see a lot of that on the NBC platform uh, because Ring City they're they're new to the sport, so they don't have any any yeah. you know top guys or anything like that. And you know the hope for them is, or at least my hope for them is to one day be able to promote, you know, really big fights because they've, to me, in my opinion, they've done a terrific job. Um, but matchmaking has been incredible. Yeah. The matchmaking has been incredible. incredible. That fight was one of the top fights I've seen, seen watch since I've been watching boxing. Yeah. That was one of the best fights I've seen in my life. And the crazy thing is you have to be, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. People are going to look at me like, come on, man. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, you got to be uh, that because people are like, well, what about this and that? Yeah. We're, not, we're not excluding that. We're saying, especially this year in 2021, yeah. that to, to this point was one of the best fights of the year. It's been a short year, of course, so we it's easy for us to say that, but that was one of the more exciting fights that I've seen in a long time. There, there haven't been very many moments where I stood up in the entire fight. I actually stood up for this entire fight. I, and again, cheating on the test i i knew what to expect from watching so much of these guys so it's it's hard for me to tell everybody oh don't miss this fight because if you're not going back and watching footage on these guys and you just don't give a damn and you, you know you're like hey sean said don't watch the fight so i'm gonna watch it you know so yeah. i'm hoping that moving forward the these these you know everybody starts to tune in here's the thing i can't promise y'all that every week <laughs> is gonna be as good as as last week however you have been consistent and 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 yeah. what's going on 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 NBC so far? NBCSN so far. Yeah, I, I mentioned before that I think the big benefit of it is there's not going to be those massive lopsided fights where even if it's you know fighter A that you know that everyone knows household name, he's undefeated. Even if you're excited to see that guy on you know Showtime or PBC or Top Rank, and they're fighting somebody, you're like, eh, they're okay, and then they you know beat them for twelve rounds or stop them four, and it's one sided. 
you're not going to have that on MBC because there's not a huge disparity between the two fighters. They yeah. literally are like, hey, this guy is close to this guy. Yeah. This girl is close to this girl. Let's match him up. And, and so it's always going to be at least even on a playing field. And then however they step up, they step up. Yeah. Ma- is it Machito? Machado. Machado. Oh, my Machido. bad. Disres- <laughs> that's disrespectful. Uh, yeah, Machado, Machido. good fighter. He- he's still going to get somebody yeah. a hell of a day, too. Yeah, for sure. His <sighs> counters are lethal. I don't know how he kept getting back up from those. When he was hitting him with those counters and dropping him, I was like, man, this is about to be an early night. And the, but the thing now with him is how healthy is he after you know, his, his three losses now, they're, they've all been knockouts. One yeah. was to the body and two mm-hmm. to the head. So yeah, it was a big stoppage, too. That was a big one. Move well, on to uh, the zone. Getting into the zone, as they say. Uh, yeah. Hey, man, you're going to get us fi- uh, super <laughs> out zone. Uh, and, and speaking of <laughs> speaking of translations, after Virgil Ortiz got the victory, oh, let me say, I'm sorry to cut you off. Oh, please go ahead. Ring City, USA, back again this week, Thursday night. What we got Eastern Standard Time. What we got? Uh, we got we got a big. The main event is a female fight. Amanda okay. Amanda, Amanda Serrano. Serrano. We, we Legend. She is a monster. Oh yeah, yeah, that's Amanda's favorite fighter. Yeah, she's, Daniela Romain uh, Romina. Uh, Bermudez from Argentina. So this is uh 39 and one against 29 and three. And Amanda Serrano is ranked number one at 126. Daniela ranked number one at 122. So that's just a, a little taste of what's coming this Thursday night. I just wanted to go ahead and plug yeah. that real quick since we were on the subject. And man, there's uh, nothing to play with. And now, yeah, you- I was gonna say <laughs> she can throw, but I was gonna say with translations. After the fight, after Virgil Ortiz got the win, which will go, we'll backtrack. But oh, don't do that. He started, thing, he started to speak Spanish, oh. and then he, and then he said, Carson, yes. come on, man. He just, he just ran out of juice. Like, he was rolling, he was rolling, and then it just hit one point. <laughs> and he ran out of juice. Because <laughs> he was, it was seriously, it was rolling along, he's flowing, he, he's speaking Spanish, it was perfect, and then all of a sudden, he was just like, and then. F bomb, and then he kept it pushing because he got tight, and and yeah. I, I recognized it when I seen it because I was like, I was like, dang, that's what I do. I get going, yeah. and then I get self conscious, and I just abort mission. And and you're amped up after a fight. So yeah, 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 yeah. So. But I thought the uh, the first I I caught some of the first fight on there was was the Lopez. It was Lopez versus Lopez. Those dudes just sat there and threw at each other the whole yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, um, and and Estrada, she impressed me yesterday we i am a fan she's different she is and that, that's a good way to describe it she was just the way she she moves with the way she sets up her punches and she's she'll kind of drop her left hand a little bit and she's she's got she's got she's smooth in, in the attack and that right hand that man she flattened her <laughs> with that right hand that she connected on but yeah, no, yeah i was i was fighter. thoroughly impressed with her performance yesterday and and uh so and then just real quick to go back yeah. uh to Thursday night we had there was a female fight on Thursday night and yeah. I think um I'm on a different side of it now with being a commentator and, and having to uh translate a certain energy through through my voice over the fights and things like that I think I get I may at this point be a little more uh, investing into these fights than other than other people are who you know don't have to study these fighters or don't don't have any interviews with these fighters and know and knows what's going on. But so just saying that to say Thursday night's fight, I said oh, I said okay, yo, these two really good women and you know really good stories coming from the, their personal lives as well. And then you fast forward and another fight in in Estrada, uh, Estrada this week over yeah. the weekend, I said man, like female boxing is turning a corner yeah. and I think we should all like kind of recognize that, you know? Mm-hmm. And we, we mentioned that before that, like if you watch, if you go back to that Estrada fight yesterday, she was smooth, if, Carson. She's super smooth. And if you're, if you were a guy, girl watching that fight and you were trying to hate on that, you were just trying to hate on that. Mm-hmm. Cause if you're just watching that as a boxing fan, how could you be mad at that? Like they, they both sat there, they threw, like we said, Estrada, she's smooth. Um, throwing punches and it, I'm just like it people find they're trying to find a way to be mad about it oh it wasn't you know men fighting men it's like dude if you're if you're that insecure and if you're you're looking for a way to hate on that that's that, 
that's a you problem, not a them problem. Because <laughs> I know all three of us were impressed, especially with Estrada yesterday. Mm. Very impressed with Estrada. Yeah. yeah, great performance. And then main yeah. event. For hey, and then uh, one more thing, since we're yeah. on the women. What, Good. Uh, and I'll get both of y'all input. I don't even know if y'all have ever thought about this, but, you know, some women out there petitioning to do three rounds opposed to two-minute rounds, doing three-minute rounds opposed to two-minute rounds. Ooh, y'all got a take on that? If not, it's okay. <laughs> I, I would say they would know a lot better than I would yeah. uh, what they're comfortable with. Um, yeah. I don't I don't have an issue with the two-minute rounds. It's not – even watching yesterday, I wasn't like, damn, that round was super short. Yeah. It just also, kind of, that was it, an action-packed fight. Yeah, so I mean that yeah. that fight specifically was just yeah. it was action. Whether it was going to be two minutes, three yeah. minutes, or seven minutes, I think they were going to throw the whole time. But um, yeah, if it's something that that they feel won't you know damage their performance at all, and and they're comfortable physically to do it, no, I'm, I'm yeah. down for it. If so you can do it, do it. Yeah, at this point, it's all up to the contract. The the managers and promoters decide whether or not the women, based on what they want, if they want to do three minute rounds, then the then the man the managers and promoters get together and they decide. You know, we we have room to make it a three minute round fight. Yeah. Um, but I do know that basically all the top women in in female boxing are wanting that to that rule to change and for there to be no way around it. Three we we want three minute rounds. Yeah. I see this is 2021 that it'll probably be implemented in 2022, 2023 at the latest. Yeah. Women are, they're athletes. Yeah. Um, you know, they just, they're, they're, they don't have the same DNA as men. So they're a little different, but they are athletes and they are doing it big time now, especially in boxing. So. Yeah. And anyone, I, most people listening to this, you would get the shit kicked out of you by one of these female boxers. Oh, I, I said, oh, what you. did I do? <laughs> Even though Thrust of Seals said she would touch. She called me out, man. I still, you know. You up in the past, but. Hey, um, listen. Yeah, yeah, listen. She said, I, 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 I said, what she she'll, said? Why she said that about me? <laughs> what do you want to say? But I said, nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. I, I do like that. It was, you were like thrown in there. I was like, well, uh, yeah, I kicked Sean Porter's ass too. I was like, hell yeah. I like it. Um, but yeah, if you're listening to this and you're hating on female <laughs> boxing, they will beat the brakes off you in the ring with little hesitation. So sure. Sure. get your life together. Um, <laughs> so main event. Bear Joe Ortiz. One of the top. Reason, Hooker. Hooker. One of the top guys, one of the top upcoming guys in boxing. I think he showed it last night. I wouldn't disagree. Yeah. Um, I don't, I didn't come away from that performance thinking really one way or the other about him. I, I wasn't like blown away. I didn't think it was like mm-hmm. an amazing, flawless performance against the top guy, Maurice Hooker, former champion at 140, great fighter. Um, I, th- I thought it was a really good performance. And I think the way I would describe it is it was the next step for him. Mm-hmm. Fought a former champ. You beat him. You stopped him. His hand was clearly the a large issue as to why that happened. But um, yeah, no. Birds was, was also yeah. the issue. He was putting it on. Yeah, it was a lot. Oh, of, you heard them body shots. It was it was gonna happen eventually, but yeah. I like that they were. And Chris Mannix kind of mentioned it. Like clearly, Maurice Hooker throws a right hand, hits him up by the shoulder, and then immediately has his hand and, and goes down. He's like, "Well, was it a shot?" That he's like, "No, I, <laughs> I hit him. <laughs> My hand popped, and I went down." But it, it was it was going to happen eventually. Anthony but, Bernard. Yeah, mm-hmm. put the heat on. How what what should Virgil Ortiz do next? How fast or slow? And let me know? and let me preface. This was also a very frequently asked question by the fans. Yeah. So you you will all answer this. Do not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do not go to that top tier yet, please. Yeah. Whatever you gotta do, stay down there. We'll fight you a Robert Garcia. Is it Robert? Is it Robert I Ghost? Do- Guerrero, fight you a Robert Guerrero. Robert Guerrero. Uh, get you, get you some of those guys. Get you, get you a couple more fights down there. Don't go up there. Don't. It's gonna be a long day for you, my man. I mean, the power seems different at that level where you're just dropping people. Ask Earl. He's he's a top guy, and it's not easy as it looks mm-hmm. when you get up there. You can't just be dropping guys like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, need to tighten up defense, get better feet. Yeah. Uh, but you're not ready for the top level. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think that is, I don't think Ant saying that, and I agree 1000%. I don't think that's a disrespect to Virgil Ortiz, and I don't know why people perceive it that way to say, hey, you know, you're 17 and 0 now, don't fight one of the top 
three or five guys at the division. I don't think that's like, oh, he's garbage. It's just like, take your time. Like, Sean, I mean, you were 20-some fights in when you got your first title. Errol, 20-some fights in when he got his first title. Keith, 20-some fights in when he got his first title. It's fine. It's it, there's Take your time. Yeah. Build up because they ask him after the fight, you know, are you ready for Terrence Crawford? He said, I don't care if I'm ready or not. And I'm like, that's not good. <laughs> if you're not ready yeah. and then you fight him, kudos to you. You fought a top guy and you might get smoked. And, and then – you weren't ready, so you kind of rushed into it a little bit. Because look at even Sean and them back in the day, they kept calling Floyd and Pacquiao out. They was not ready. No. Sean at 25, 22 was not ready for Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. But it's just just take your time. Yeah. You're still you still young. You got age <laughs> and time yeah, on your side. One thing my dad would always tell me when I was younger, he and he didn't mean it in a disrespectful way, but he would say. He would say, this is why you're the fighter and I'm the trainer and the manager. I'm going to do my job and you're going to do your job. Fighters can't think like managers and fighters can't think like trainers. You Mm. think you know what to do in the gym, but you don't know. I'm the trainer. I know what's going on. I know what to do. And I didn't really understand that back in the day. He says, you don't understand the business of, of boxing the way you think you do. You think you're ready for this guy and that guy. You you let me do it because you ask any fighter right now who they want to fight, and they always say they want to fight the top dog. He said, y'all can't think the business. Y'all don't understand the business. The only thing y'all understand is get in and fight and let me win and let me, let me move on. But there's always a step. There's always a step. And that's what I'm going to say about Virgil Ortiz. I'm not going to say I'm saying that to Virgil Ortiz. What I'm yeah. going to say about Virgil Ortiz is there's always a step. You just took a step with Maurice Hooker. Take a bigger step. Doesn't have to be that doesn't have to be the biggest step. Just take a bigger step. Something that tests you a little bit more, something that gives you something else to train for. You know, people always think that get, being ready for a certain level of fighter means getting in the fight in the ring and fighting. It doesn't, that's not just it. You know, there's other styles that you have to prepare for, and there's other type of fighters that you have to prepare for. Once you prepare for those guys moving forward, you may not ne- may never see that style ever again, but you still may implement something that you learned back then. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think he still got some learning to do. And I think that he's still um I still I think he's one of the best, especially young guys out there right now. Absolutely. But I do not think he's ready for the the top elite guys the the young the fresh top elite guys yeah and and i think we've we've done on pretty much every episode we talk about how great this young generation is they want the big fights yeah i have no issue with it virgil ortiz if you want to call out bud errol spence sean porter keith Thurman, do it have no issue with it i love that you have that mindset but i think for there to be like a narrative of Oh, the the top guys don't want to fight him. It's like the top guys don't always have to fight the next guy. I understand Tiafimo and Lomachenko happened. I get it. That was kind of a thing. Tiafimo won, and now everyone's going to keep going back to that. Oh, Tiafimo got a shot and beat Lomachenko. That's fine. <laughs> not every fighter is the same. Not every situation is the same. Yeah, so. He 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 definitely set a fine example. Yeah, for sure. Diego Lopez, but how many people can follow that example? You yeah. know, and and my biggest advice to Virgil and Ennis, all of those young guys understand that you 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 don't understand the business, but understand that once you go up here, there's no going back. Yeah. So so hypothetically, if, if Virgil Ortiz, if you do challenge Earl, Earl Spence Jr. and you and you win against Earl Spence Jr., now you got another tough fight. Now you got Sean Porter. Now you got Terrence Crawford, the one, the, the man you want. Yeah. You know, not now you in this tough. Now you in tough fight after yeah. tough fight, and there may have been some steps that could have been taken prior to getting into, the, into those tough fights. I mean, you take a look at me, and I've I've in a lot of ways I've I've had tough fight after tough fight, but. I've been ready for all of those fights and it's because I took the right steps and I'm, and I'm not saying that, you, you know, slow down and wait till you're 25. And no, I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying you have to go the route that I went in yeah. order for you to be ready. I'm just saying that understand that you, you still have some growing to do. You are a young man at 147 and there are relatively grown men at 147 at the top level. So yeah. it makes a difference. Yeah. Just keep fighting. I mean, look at again, like you don't have to go the Sean Porter route, but Think of the guys you fought, Julio Diaz twice, Alfonso Gomez, and then you fought guys maybe even not to that level, but like 
Hector Munoz, who was going to be there yeah. the entire 12 rounds or 10 rounds, however many rounds it was. He was going to yeah. be there till the end. The, it's just one of those things where just keep fighting guys that are going to keep testing you. Yeah. You'll get there. I don't think any of the three of us have any doubts Virgil Ortiz can be a champion at 147. Um, maybe 154, depending on how his weight goes. But um, <laughs> I'm gonna. I like, um, I like a Connor Bean fight for him. Connor Ben, yeah, it's not a bad fight. Yeah, yeah Ben. Yeah, I like. <laughs> I like that. Connor Bean. That's not, <laughs> that's not. That's not a bad call. That's a good fight, I think. Yeah. Both I didn't see his fight, last right? fight, but I heard he, he you know, he was kind of. Yeah, yeah, Connor Ben. Well, he yeah, fought yeah, your guy. Yeah, I know, yeah I know, your I guy. You I did. The, you did the same thing with it. Yeah, <laughs> you dance with it. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, and then we can get for we can move forward with the questions. But yeah. I know a lot of people <clears throat> they want to know um, what w- when you talk about a guy growing in the ring and having to go through things in the ring. What does that really mean? I'm, it doesn't mean you have to get cut. Doesn't mean doesn't mean you have to get punched to the body or dropped and get up and, and come back from that and win a fight. That's not what I mean by going through something in the ring. One thing that we all know as human beings is that our mind controls everything. When you wake up in the morning, your mind is going to tell you what you want to eat. Then your mind is going, then you're going to have to basically have a discussion with your mind, whether or not, Hey, am I going to eat the, eat this bacon or I'm going to eat this fruit? You know what I mean? Your mind Whatever your mind wants, that's what that's what you're going to get. Whatever your mind believes, that's what's going to happen. And so in the boxing ring, when I say go through things, you'll get to a point where it's the eighth round and you're like, damn, I've never been here before. Bing, you went through something. Yeah. Ninth round. And this dude is he's still hitting hard like this. Bing, you went through something. There's things that your mind is going to start to recognize and feel and, and basically tell you're gonna it's gonna tell you, tell yourself, you're gonna be talking to yourself in the ring, and, and you're gonna be realizing things in the ring. And when those moments happen, that's when you really grow as a fighter. And I'm not saying that every fighter talks to themselves and things like that, but it could be a, a instance where you go back and you watching the fight and, and you get a quick reminder of how you felt in a certain moment. Bing you grew in that moment, you know? So yeah. it's not until you start to get challenged do you really grow as a fighter. And I think that Maurice uh, Hooker challenged Virgil a little last night. Yeah. But but he's still, there's other guys who can challenge him and and and, and help him make some strides as a professional before he gets in the ring with and, the guns. And before we move into the fan questions, which I have the first one on deck, shout out to Maurice Hooker. Who after the fight said to anyone Carson, you Carson is wild. It was the worst. because it was at he's home. He's it was he's, random as heck too. But he's a Texas native. <laughs> he's from the area. Oh man. And was getting booed. And he said to anyone booing, fuck y'all. Flipped the road. <laughs> and then stepped out of the ring and put his hands out, like, hey, who wants it? Let's do this. And, and, Thankfully, and, and for, but for a quick second, like I thought to myself that somebody was actually going to try to approach him. Yeah, the way he got out the ring thinking that somebody was going to try to approach him, yeah. you know, that, that was, was, that was, uh, that was, classic. that was different. And I was then, like, whoa. And one more thing before the questions, Chris Mannix, you do a great job. I am a little critical of the questions that you're asking Maurice Hooker that are all about how great Virgil Ortiz is after he just beat you. You're like, so how good is he? You know, is he ready for this? If I was Maurice Hooker, I'd be like, dude, I don't give two dams if he's ready for whoever. I just want him. You know me. I pay attention to all those guys, Sergio and and Chris. And I'm I'm fans of them. But but last night I was like – they they missed the they missed a couple of swings last yeah, night. Like I was like, you thought he was gonna be like, oh, you know what? You know, I think he's ready for so and so. It's like, no, he just beat me. Like he knocked me down and whatever. Yeah. But so first question ties right into this uh, off Instagram. Uh, Elway twenty two, our guy Larry Drummond. Okay, uh, Larry. He wants, Elway. he wants to know after Virgil Ortiz's win last night, we kind of hinted towards it, but who is one guy you would like to see him fight next? This for me. There's are are these questions just for me? Yeah, it can be anyone. <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if y'all have anyone. I don't have a who do I want to see him fight, but I would love to see him in a fight with the undefeated fighter, uh, a fighter who who possibly is 
up and coming as well. Not Ennis. So don't don't think I'm going there. But, you know, a guy who's got a, a decent record and can challenge him. I want to see him in the ring with somebody who can challenge him. Can I can I float one in by you? Float it. How about Josecito? How do you like that? Oh, Josecito Lopez. He's not going to back down. He's going to be there knocking on knocking on your door all night. That's true. Then after that, I got one for you. Hit me with it. Oh, Sean, you that's all Sean got. Okay. <laughs> okay. What about in a comeback fight? Keith Thurman. Oh, Keith Thurman. Okay. <sighs> that's that's tough. That's we don't know what to, Keith Thurman we're gonna get. I, that's true. But if you if I think if anyone were to ask Keith to fight Virgil, that would make Keith feel like he's a gatekeeper. And he's like, nah, this ain't that, that. I ain't the guy. I ain't the one. I'm. I'm still at this level, you know. But you, he, he, nah. you really not. Nah, you really no, not. No, no, I don't say it. I but, say it for but, you. But, but Keith gonna do it all. Keith gonna say, man, I got one loss, homie. I got one loss, homie. I mean, <laughs> losses you got Sean. I mean, losses you got Sean. I got one loss, homie. I lost to Manny Pacquiao. Who you lose to? I beat you. So if anything, you lower than me. He's gonna keep gonna do all that. Yeah, true. And, which is basically him deflecting. That's key. That's key. <laughs> which is him deflecting. You know what I mean? And you know, so I, I I like that fight, but I don't think that's a fight that Keith would would, would consider. He, I know Keith wouldn't consider that. And but I do like that fight. Some one of the questions was actually, when is Keith gonna come on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was that was a very close Not impression more, homie. Yeah, Not yeah. more, homie. <laughs> that was a very good impression of, of Keith there. Um, so another one on Instagram, they wanted to know. This is MK for BOI, MK for boy. I'm guessing I don't know, but they want to know how Sean is behind closed doors. And oh. I wouldn't say. I'll say he got so many stories to tell real quick. No, I was going to say he's the same as you see. <laughs> There's not like for anyone that thinks Sean is like massively different that you don't see him. He's the same person. Like I, I read a comment one time. Somebody was like, he probably don't even talk like that in real life. I was like. No, that's pretty no, really much how I thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, he really, it comes yeah, and yeah. goes. You know, my Cleveland comes and goes. <laughs> yeah, uh, they were like, "Yeah, how's he behind closed doors?" He's literally the same guy. Yeah. I don't know how Ant feels, but I've known you a while. If I get, <laughs> tell them something. Ant. Hey, no, nah, he's cool, but he's super disrespectful. Him and his kid. Every time I go to his house, they got a new cartoon. Tune, they're calling. They saying, "Oh, this you." Hold on, we gotta show you. Disrespectful. So every time I go to his house, he got a big cartoon. They says me. Actually, I hate I hated that I started that. Uh, and your kid won't stop <laughs> for, for forever ago. But like, I one time I pointed out to Shaddai, I said, "Oh, that looks like mommy, doesn't it?" And then from that point on, everybody looks like somebody. We can't watch anything without him saying somebody looks like somebody. But if anybody watches animated cartoons, animated movies, the movie that is notorious for being Ant. Monsters. Oh, Inc. come on, man. What you doing? Monsters Universe. Oh. The, the head, the head guy of the uh, fraternity looks, it, I mean, 100%. And, 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 but look, look, look. In, and then he put me in that. And too. he did too. He did too. But it, it came out of nowhere. We just chilling. He said, looks like Ed. <laughs> I said, today that do look like Ed. And then uh, the other, the other character on there, Squishy. <laughs> that's Carson? Yeah, he looped, he, put, he looped both of us into that. Oh, yeah. that's wild. Very disrespectful. Um, but no, nah, outside of ring, yeah, Sean's the same, same guy. There's nothing exciting. He's the same yeah. guy. Um, uh, another one from Instagram, xvii.damian wants to know, if you weren't a pro fighter, what career would you have had? Um, every, I mean, I'm, I'm blessed, man. Everything that I'm, I'm pursuing now, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but when I was in high school, my my plan was to go to college, play college football, and then I just wanted to be a high school football coach and a gym teacher. I was like, I'll just I'll, I'll be a teacher. I felt like that way I still would be able to reach out to kids and help kids. And then obviously with with being in love with football, I still would be able to uh, be involved with football. So I that kind of was like that was like Plan B, you know that. In my mind, I thought I wanted that to be my plan A. You know, I do. I consider boxing and being a professional athlete and everything that I am now. It's, it's, it's a, um, 
it's a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a uh, it's it's a very complex lifestyle that you have to live. Um, and I and I w- in high school I would tell myself that I did not want to live a comp. I wanted a simple life, a simple life. And I felt like being a gym teacher and a football coach would have been living the simple life. But God had other plans for me. Yeah, that's fair. Um, a Twitter one, and this kind of goes back to what we were talking about with with Virgil Ortiz at Lukey Boxing said. What is the right way and the wrong way to build a fighter? The right way, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's every every fighter is different, and yeah. I think maybe the simplest way to just I'm gonna give y'all like a really really bland answer for this. I would say you start your fighter off uh, against competition that you know he's gonna beat, but competition that's going to basically get him acclimated to fighting without a head gear, fighting with smaller gloves, fighting without a shirt on, you know, all the, all the little simple things. Four to six, four round fights, just to kind of get the cobwebs out and, and I'm here and it's exciting. After that, you start stepping up the competition, six round fights. Uh, then you go from eights to tens to twelves. Um, the way I did it, I had, I think I had six fights scheduled for four rounds. And then I had two fights scheduled for six rounders. Those never went six rounds. And then I had an eight rounder scheduled that never went eight. And then I was on my way to doing tens. And then after tens, 12. So I, I relatively, I, I had uh, 10 fights in my first year of boxing. A lot of guys could, could wish to have 10 years in the 10 fights in the first year. Uh, and a lot of guys get close. A lot of guys more like seven or eight fights. Um, so when you're on that fast track, it's all about just what's the next move with my fighter. How's my fighter growing? My fighter's healthy. My fighter, you know, is doing all the right things. So as long as it, like Mr. Hammond told me, as long as you're healthy, you can fight. You know, yeah, whenever yeah. you you whenever you're healthy, you're ready to go. We'll put you in the ring. And um, that was I signed with with uh, PBC in 2010, and um, you know that's pretty much how how I've moved since. And then as far as the wrong way, probably just rushing them. For yeah, the wrong, the wrong way, you know, and again, everybody's different because we've yeah. seen some like 3-0 and fighters do 10 rounders and things like that. Normally, when you see that, that's usually the big guy, the heavyweight or the or the, the cruiserweight who's just so much more dominant than anybody in, at, at that level that they, they bump up really quickly. But um, yeah, I would say the, the, the wrong way to move a fighter is to put him in the ring with another undefeated fighter in his first fight. Put him in the ring with an undefeated fighter in his fifth fight. You don't want to start doing undefeated fighters until you know you get around that 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 um, that year mark, that twelve that twelve fight mark. So I have I have two more for you. Cool. So one, and I know you won't comment specifically on action regarding it, but this is from Instagram Filio Lerv and. What are some of the best sparring sessions that you've seen? Best sparring sessions I've seen. That's a great question. You don't have to say who got the better of who or if anyone got dropped or slept, but were there any ones that you kind of stick out that you were like, damn, that was a good, good action. The Olympic training center um, during, during the Olympic run, seeing all those guys sparred each other. I uh, uh, think, um, I think Terrence Crawford was in the ring with a, uh, Gary Russell. Gary Russell was in the ring with Nuke uh, Rashi Warren from Cincinnati. Um, they actually, and that was another good one too. We we all went out for uh, for the 2012 team in 2011. Um, I sparred like two rounds with Errol that year. Uh, Errol sparred. He sparred with somebody, and it was it was good stuff. It's been I've seen a lot of great sparring sessions. I just can't think of any right off the top. I'll uh, I try to bang my head and um, come back with that next week. Hey, I got a good one. Demetrius Andrade, Sean Porter. I was able to witness that. <laughs> that, was, that was a good. That was hey. That was enjoyable. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. yeah. I and sparred then, with Keith too. Did you did y'all know that? You knew that. Huh, there, yeah, there yeah, was, yeah, they put a video a, out. Yeah, I was gonna say that oh, was really? a hot yeah, that yeah. was a hot controversy back <laughs> before your fight. Before you guys, <laughs> I think it was before you guys were gonna fight and then Keith yeah. got hurt. Oh yeah, he did yeah. put the he put the video out. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that all went down, but that yeah. was a crazy time. And then last yeah, one ties in of me with, with sparring with Manny too. Ties into uh put it out. Yeah. 
we're gonna leak it. Um, we'll get some views. <laughs> we'll get the podcast up. Donate if we can get a, a donation of a combined five hundred thousand dollars, we'll drop the video. Done. Yeah, easy. And so this one ties into an announcement from you this week. This is from underscore sizzle the goat from Instagram. Sizzle the sizzle. goat. Sizzle the goat. They want to know what are your what thoughts it, on being in the ESBC boxing game. Um, I love it. <clears throat> uh, it's funny because about two years ago, when I still was working at Fox, just heard people rambling, talking about a boxing game. And I was hearing all the reasons why there hasn't been a, a boxing game and why it couldn't work and things like that. Some businessmen have put it together. Um, I get obviously part of ES, uh, BC, they put it together and they figured it out. So I think that they figured out things. I'm happy with it. My dad's happy with it. And I mean, you, if you take a look at all, all the guys that they have had signed so far, yeah, everybody man. seems to be uh, pretty comfortable with the business part of the uh, the game. Yeah, For man. me, now I just want to see it. I want to yeah. see how it, how it moves. I'm hoping that everybody is not only uh, pleased with it, but excited and um, uh and and looking forward to like building building it you know making it bigger and better you know so um just like NCAA uh the 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 Madden games and the NBA games you know I, I think it would be amazing for boxing to have a new a new game every we'll wait year for it. or a way to up uh, to uh upgrade the game every I have, year. I have so, a follow up for you for all three of us okay so who on that game, it doesn't have to be a fighter that's already listed as signed on. Who would you want to fight with the most on ESBC? If it's if 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 in my mind, if it's as amazing as I as I hope it to be, uh Roy Jones, I think like just like if, if he's moving, you know what I mean, and doing him. Not the, not think, the Roy Jones we saw in the Tyson exhibition. No, but I mean, like for real though, we talking about games, so yeah. we. It, I, I hope he's not that version, you know. Yeah, so prime Roy. Um, yeah, but if we get a prime Roy, you know, chiseled out and and can you know really do his thing, I know it's obviously there's limitations with the games, but you know to see him be able to get in there and do his thing, I I, I think I'm looking forward to fighting with Roy. You and him. and because I'm a part of the game, I'm looking forward to seeing how my stats look. <laughs> yeah, I got a feeling my stamina is gonna be all the way up. Yeah, you're gonna be real disrespectful with my power. Yeah, hey, Carson, you know this. Sean won't. Yeah. I, it's Floyd, but you know with Floyd, you can't be defensive. Floyd on that fight, you gotta go after somebody. You gotta turn it up to what's it? Money is it? No, it's pretty boy. Uh, pretty Floyd. boy Floyd. Yeah, I'm like I want to just look cute like Floyd used to. I wow. can't do that. I gotta go get somebody. So my my best. What did, guy, so what did they do with Floyd? Do they make two like two styles for Floyd? Because you know <laughs> most guys only have one style, but he's got he's got two styles. Like, what do you do with Floyd? I can't think of which what era it would have been the current one. So yeah, it would have yeah. been like it would have been Money but Mayweather. For you sure. can't just sit there and block. You got to go to to win the fight. <laughs> so I used to like I would prefer to fight when we kept fighting on the old fight night. It was like Lara Andre Ward. Like I was those guys stick and move. My best guy on there, my favorite fighter, Roberto Duran. I have a highly, highly regarded record on fight night, but I think I think the lighter weight guys might be fun in this. Like like Inoue, Chocolatito. Mm -hmm. Like if you can get in there with those guys and throw all those punches, because the issue with the old games was if you were even a slightly heavyweight, you got gassed fast. Like uh. You throw too many punches and your stamina was gone. And if your stamina was gone, you were going down for the count if somebody hit you. So I think the lighter weights might be fun. But I am yeah. very, as a video game and boxing fan, I'm very excited for that. Speaking of lighter weight, let's give a shout out to our guy, Malik Montgomery. Got yeah. it done again. Hell yeah. First round TKO. You talking to my dad, man? No, you talking to your dad. Okay. He posted. <laughs> so did the Puerto Rican podcast. Are you so, he, no. Hey, Carson, he's asked me that before. He said, did you talk to my dad? I said, no, he just posted. Yeah. First yeah. round, body. Yeah, 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 yeah. body work. Body and they got a whole, whole, you guys got a whole crew over there. I yeah, what's know. up? Y'all got a stable? What y'all I mean, that, was, I mean that, that literally is a whole crew yeah. over there. That was like no limit records. <laughs> so my dad is, uh, he's like, okay, so this is where Sean is in his life. And, and I understand that. He says, uh, he says, I'm going to continue going and I'm just going to reach back and help. So he's gotten guys that 
are are regard are regarded as amateurs, but aren't like the elite top guys. You know, yeah. he he got he's got one he's got just uh, some brothers that were qualified um, Olympians uh, here in, from Kansas City uh, or uh, or uh, fought in the Olympic trials here from Kansas City. And um, they are exceptional fighters, um, very good and hungry, you know. And I think that that's the, the advantage that I get from being around them. Is it's like I get to see that hunger, you know. And I get, to, and you know, they always asking me for advice and stuff. Like all of them are asking me for advice and stuff like that. So it's like you you can't turn it off, you know. Does you that, can't have an off day because they're watching you. you does know? that give you a little more juice? Absolutely. Being around the young guys are they're absolutely <laughs> yeah, and and I was doing an interview and I I said this while my dad was watching, and then my dad walked away. I said, yeah, see, he he doesn't think I know what he's doing, but my dad's like, if I get these guys to come in here, if they if they if they kick Sean's butt the first day, he's gonna come back and they won't do it again. Yeah. He said, so I'm gonna get these guys to come in here to push him so that he can get his mind right and get focused on doing what he needs to do. And that's basically what where I've been like since they've been coming and going over the last couple of weeks. Uh obviously he's got Malik. Malik has a brother, he actually boom Malik, two brothers, but one guy uh at this point in time is is really wanting to get back going with his career a lot like Malik. So he I think he's gonna start trying to do things with Malik's brother as well. And then um my dad was had a guy in here from uh from guy Texas. Cuba. Yeah and and a kid from Cuba too. So, yeah. They so. had shout out to Sean Zaitel and Fight Hype that he's interviewing them and the best is they almost took up a whole side of the I, ring. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, let go ahead down the line. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Malik. <laughs> this is my cousin. Uh, this is his brother. <laughs> my third cousin. He's from Kansas City. Uh, yeah, it was a whole crew over there. And that was my dad's thing. My dad's thing is like, you know, if I get brothers, um, not only, you know, is it that same family affair that we've always had, but they can always look out for one another, you mm-hmm. know. And and I and I've asked like every all of them that I've met, I've asked them like, hey, yo, how how close to you guys you know that kind of stuff everybody says we're like this and and that makes my heart feel good because my brothers and I growing up we were swinging on each other I mean I swung on my brother one time getting off the school bus right and and I'm fast so I'm running I'm sorry I see you when I get home I just stopped running I'm like might as well deal with it now. I wasn't now. thinking. I wasn't thinking. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? So these kids, they they love each other and they and they want what's best for one another, you know. So and and my dad's smart, you know. I and and I'll 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 uh, I'll testify to that all day and all night. My dad is turning one brother pro and had a conversation with them together and separately and said, I'm t- I'm gonna turn you pro soon, but your brother's not ready yet. So we're gonna we're gonna slow him down, get him back, get him going with some more amateur fights and things like that. You, even though you got brothers, even though they're close to the same age, even though you got guys turning pro at the same time, you can't, it can't be a race. Yeah. And you can't say, okay, you did it, you do it too. You did it, you do it too. You got to treat each each fighter, um, you know, tailor each fighter's training and fighting according to the more they go. So right now we're all training the same. And because even though I do 12 rounds, I'm training like I'm fighting four minute round or four rounds because, you know, that's how hard they, they're pushing me. And, and my dad's wanted me to push them. So my dad, yo, uh, we was on the track the other day. And he said, <laughs> I, he said, I want you to run a 400 with, with Malik. He says, but don't let him beat you. I said, I said, don't let him beat me. He said, yeah. So we get online. Ready? Said, I said, hold on a second. I went over to my dad. I said, I said, you want us to run it like we ran it the other week? The speed, the tempo the other week was like, we basically were running one 400 meter and then that was it for the day. But I knew that wasn't going to be it for the day. So I said, you want me to run it like I ran it last week? He said, yeah. I said, all right. I got back. I ran it. I got back before Malik and all that. But I was like, Yo, what is he doing? Is why is he doing this to me? You know, so but that's that's the. I thought you were gonna say you grabbed your hamstring, like, hey, wait a second, my hamstring's feeling a little tight today. I don't want to do it. I thought about it, man. I just can't bring myself to do it. Yes. I thought I about it. You. Yeah. Wait, wait. Before he left, he said, "Hey, man, I just want before I'm good. Once you good, right? Because he way knows that like I'm not at this point in my training to be doing with everything that I was doing. Yeah. I said, no, I'm good. He called me again later. Like, Hey, you, you all right? I said, I said, no, I'm good. It was a hard one, but I made it through it, you know? And, and to close it out, that is a huge X factor for these young fighters yes. having coach Wade. Yes. 
obviously your dad, shout out KP, Mm -hmm. but having coach Wade, that's able to help you as you get conditioning and strength and everything unmatched. Because, and for anybody wondering why, why you, why I agree with that, because all of these kids come from boxing. This is, they know how to throw jabs, know how to throw one twos. They know how to slip, use defense, all that kind of stuff. My dad is going to enhance all of that. But what you get from a strength and conditioning coach is you, you basically, you get, it's like having a growth spurt. It's like you, your, your powers here, your speeds here, your agility's here, and it's going to grow while, as you grow. Yeah. But when you get somebody in there that can tap into it and get it to grow on its own, you'll be that much further along once you get going in your career. So, I mean, I had strength and conditioning my whole way, basically my entire career. And, you know, you see where, where, where I'm at now, you know, in, in terms of having that, that, that one speed and, you know, that, that top tier conditioning. So that's what those guys are going to get. No doubt, sir. And fans, I got some inside info. Hey, Sean's looking in shape. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's all I can say. I can't say nothing else. Somebody asked me the other day, man, what's next? I'm like, I don't know. You can tell me. I said, <laughs> you can oh. tell me. Just, just, just always. That's where you plug the podcast. Tune in every Tuesday. You might yeah, hear you go. <laughs> you oh, can yeah. tell me. <laughs> yeah. Like, comment. So leave a question. We, yeah. we ready. Yeah. Well, we probably one day we might just do question day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we ready for y'all. God bless. Yeah, we ready for it. Give us all the smoke. Don't tell me you didn't enjoy what you saw because I know you did. What you need to do now? Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like. Hit that notification button. Check us out every week, every Tuesday. Something new for you right here on the Portaway Podcast. <laughs>